Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. We're up in the air on today's show, Taylor. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Woohoo! Woo! Hi and welcome to the Friday Zone. I'm Emily. And I'm Taylor. And today on the show, we're going to kick off with a look into the science of air with our pal Stacy from the Wonder Lab Museum. Hey, Stacy, how's hey. it going? Hi. So, we're so excited right. that you're here. Yeah, it's great to be back. What you got? What Lots you got? Lots of great for science us? stuff today. Cool, cool, cool. And so, to start off with, we're going to be talking about air today. So, mm -hmm. we're going to answer an age old question. All right. This right here. Mm -hmm. Is the glass half empty or half full? It's half full. Easy. Half empty. Psh, I got it. Out. No, I'm right. Yeah. Actually, the correct answer, the scientific answer, is the glass is completely full. Oh, me? Because it's full of half water and half ah. air. You're so right. Yep. She's so smart. And a lot of times, people do think air is mm -hmm. nothing, but it's actually matter, just like solids and liquids yeah. that mm -hmm. are all around us. And so without that without air being matter, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the things that we're used to. Mm -hmm. So, for example, flying airplanes. Nice. It flew. Little we'll nose dive. Yeah. Great. And uh, helicopters. We would not be able to fly a helicopter Fair if enough. air was not that? matter. So it takes up space. It has mass. Mm -hmm. And this right here is a very simple experiment that we can do. This is a balance that I made mm -hmm. with a ruler. We have two identical balloons. Okay. One is deflated, uh -huh. one is inflated with my breath. And so we can see when we hold it up that in fact the air one weighs more. It's heavier. It does. All right. That's interesting. So you wouldn't air, think that normally. You would not think that, mm -hmm. but there's no, no air in this one, air in this one, and therefore it's heavier. So that shows wow. us with a simple demonstration that air is in fact matter. Right. So we can do some stuff with air. Let's do some stuff with air. All right, we're going to do I some like great it. stuff. <laughs> some experiments. Okay. All right, our first one is kind of about flight. So if okay. you ever thought about how airplanes fly. Well, we just flew. Movies. I don't know we did. if you saw you that. Did. So we you did. So you used something the called the Bernoulli principle ah, to fly. Bernoulli. And the way that the Bernoulli principle works is it says that when air is moving fast, uh -huh. it has less pressure. When it's moving slow, it actually has more pressure. Oh. So it's not really what you and would think. No, not at all. So we're going to do a little experiment to show that. Just take this, hold it kind of just under your lips like that. Okay. okay. All right. And what you're going to do is just blow over that piece of paper. Now, what do you think is going to happen mm. to your piece of paper? It's going to lift up. Okay. I kind of think the same thing. It'll have to come up and move that. All something. right. So, so go ahead and try it out. Okay. Ooh, the harder I blow. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, don't pass up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like so Frog most tongue. of the time, people think if you blow on something, it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. In fact, when you blow across it, that less pressure on top, more pressure underneath lifts it up, and that's ah, what lifts an airplane. That's and cool. And what lifted you guys when, yeah. you were, when you were flying. Those Wright brothers, hmm, they figured sense. it out. Okay. All right. So you got another one. Scientific well. equipment. <laughs> Hair dryer. <laughs> all right, we're going to demonstrate that same principle okay. again. You've all used a hair dryer, mm -hmm. all right? When we turn it on. Have you seen my hair, Stacy? <laughs> I mean, of course I use a hair dryer. I okay. should have had you bring yours in. I know, right? All right. <laughs> so when you turn it on, fa fast air comes out. Uh -huh. Kind of makes like a column of air. Yeah. But around that is all the air that's not moving so fast. Mm. So again, the slower air puts pressure, holds things kind of like a cage, yeah. and then you have your fast pressure inside. So okay. why don't you take this? Yes. I'll give you those. Okay. Just turn that on. And the black one? Okay. Switch right there. All right, Emily, go ahead and put one of those right above our hair dryer. And let go? Yep. Whoa. 
It's not yeah. going out. It's not going out, exactly. So the air around here is actually holding it in. Taylor, what you can do now is just tilt it a little to the side, kind of maybe a 45 degree angle. Keep going. All it's right. flipping. So you can see, yeah, it's not falling out, and that's because the air is holding it in. Okay, I was about to eat it. Okay. All right, turn it back up. Go ahead and try and put the other one right on top. What? Oh. Oh, ah. oh my Whoa. god. Whoa! It's staying. This is so cool. <laughs> I can't right. believe it. Oh. Oh. Ah, that's okay. I've got more. Got it. Okay. Turn this <laughs> off. Turn oh, I'm off. sorry. I'm blowing it right <laughs> in your face. What am I doing? Okay. All right. That's cool. All right. We're good. So okay. it kept it in, like, uh, like almost like the, the air had caged it in a little exactly. bit. Exactly. So yeah. if you think of that slower air kind of like a cage, uh -huh. it holds it in. And you could see it was it was kind of balancing yeah. and setting on that slower moving air. That's really air. cool. That's awesome. So, so our next one, we're going to do right another in. very cool experiment here. Okay. Same idea. So we have a ping pong ball in the cup. And you can see that there is air underneath there. There's space. Mm -hmm. So, of course, that air is not moving fast. I'm going to have you guys blow right over the top of this. And you have slow moving air underneath, uh -huh. fast moving air above it. Uh -huh. So, less pressure, more pressure. And it should pop the ping pong ball up. And if you're really good, you can get it into the cup. Oh, Ooh, cool. Nice cup. So, Challenge accepted. Yeah. You ready? So, ready? On the count of three. Okay. You're on that way. Not this one. What? Yeah, I know. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I'm ready. All right, right. Okay. one, two, three. Oh! Hang on. Right across the top. Oh, nice. yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> right. So it actually, you saw it lift up and move over, but that's because the air actually applied the pressure directly above the it. The air right? was, the, the more Under pressure it. was underneath. Okay. So it was pushed up out of the cup when there was less pressure above it. Cool. So stronger underneath. Not as strong on the top. Cool. Nice job. All right. Fun game to play at home. Yeah. It's doing pretty good. Yeah. So air is all around us. Air is all around us, yes. And we're going to apply the same principle to another kind of cool challenge. OK. All right. Hope your lungs are nice and full of air today. Yes, because they are. I think so. Stay you guys are going to blow up mm. these huge bags. OK. All right. So we'll just lay these across here. Taylor, take that one. Thank you. Emily, mm. take that one. All right. All right. Now, we're going to do this in two different ways, all right? Okay. You're going to put the bag right up to your mouth. You're going to blow when I tell you, okay. all right? Emily. Yes. You're going to do it a bit differently. You're going to hold it away from your face. Okay. About 10 or 12 inches away from your face. All right. All right now, the challenge is you only get to use one breath. Just one? One big breath. So when I tell you, take the biggest breath you can. Right. One breath and let's see who can blow it up more. Once you blow it, just kind of gather the ends up so the air gets trapped. All right, okay. ready? Yeah. One, two, three. <gasps> I got it. Uh, do you see this? All right. Nice. So what, how did mine fill up more than his did? All right, so if we think about our Bernoulli principle mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. Uh, we have fast moving air, just like coming out of the hair dryer when you blew that air out. Mm -hmm. Fast moving air, and the slower air around it was more pressure, and it rushes in to fill up that low pressure area. And so, with science on your side, you were able to get lots of extra air in there than what you could possibly hold in your lungs. Cool. Well, we've got we've got a few more, but while we get set up for those, check out some homemade trebuchets at the Indiana State Science Olympiad tournament and this Friday's own field trip. Hey guys, I'm at the Indiana Science Olympiad Storm the Castle event. Now, with this we have trebuchets. And what a trebuchet is, it's similar to a catapult. Now, trebuchets were used in medieval times uh, during warfare to launch large stones and other kinds of missiles to hit castles. Now, we're not hitting real castles here, but we're hitting a small uh, model castle. I'm here with Colleen and Blaine. And now, guys, can you tell me a little bit about what this event is? You build a trebuchet, which is, which is basically you pull a string and it'll let the ball fly. It cannot have any sort of um, any extra momentum, and you take graphs, you measure it from projectiles and counterweights, and then you fire it at a castle, see if you can try to hit it. What they're doing is they're using this counterweight on the back of the trebuchet, and when you launch it, it acts like a whip, and then the projectile, which they have a small ball projectile, will launch, and their goal is to see how far they can get it. 
and so they'll slowly move the castle back and back and back. How much pre-planning went into this? Um, probably about three months maybe. Wow, that's a lot of time. Yeah. And so what all did you guys do in that time? Well, uh, at the beginning we built a, well we planned out a sketch the design and then we spent about a month um, building it and then all that other time launching it and making the graphs. Cool. What are the judges looking for in this? Oh, uh, they're looking for just like a perfect 65 centimeters because that's our weight, our um, height limit. If you go over, you could get disqualified, but we go under about 63 and a half. Okay. And so um, they're looking for it to be in those measurements, um, it to be able to um, launch it at least close to the castle, and they're looking for good graphs as well. All right, and we're back with Stacy from the Wonder Lab. Now, Stacy, we were just talking about the Bernoulli principle. Right. And now we're talking about air pressure. Air pressure, right. So just the same way that we were talking about air being matter, mm -hmm. so we can actually squeeze all those molecules of air together. Mm -hmm. And when we do that, it makes a lot of pressure inside mm -hmm. of something. So this right here is a toy that works on air pressure. Ah. So this is a pop gun. Ooh. Ooh, pop Sounds fun. Yes, very cool. And if you like this, you can make one of these at the museum on okay. Saturday, May 12th. Ooh. From 12 to 3.30, you can drop in. It's $2 per project oh, if you want to do it. Oh, that's nothing at all. Nothing, yep. And you take can make a really home. cool air pressure toy and, and take it home. Cool. Right. Make sure to check that out, guys. Awesome. Saturday the 12th. So the way this works is that we have a chamber right here mm -hmm. full of air. We're going to trap the air inside with one of these corks. Mm -hmm. And there's a gasket inside here that prevents the air from... Uh -huh escaping and so when I push this in it's going to compress the air make a whole lot of pressure on it and it's going to force that out. Cool. Right? All right. Yeah, and yeah. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. Well, that went pretty far. That looks yep. pretty light too. Yep. Pretty lightweight. Yep. Wow. These are just made out of foam so they're, Can I they're try? pretty safe. Last time I tried an experiment I know I kind of <laughs> yeah. goofed up a this little one, bit. This one this one can't start on fire. Okay. All good. Right? Good. So, good. Do okay. That. so just make sure you do it nice and fast so that right. you create a lot of pressure. What camera are we on right now? I right love here? that sound. A little bit more. There we go. Oh, there we go. Nice. Oh, nice. Cool. That's awesome. So what actually is creating the pressure in there? You can hear it go all the right. way through. Yeah. So that's the release of pressure that you're hearing. You mm -hmm. hear that, that air come out all at one time. It makes that great popping sound. Cool. OK, what is the, All what right. Is this? So even better. A little bit bigger. So we're, yeah, we're moving up in size. <laughs> this is a potato gun. Yeah. All right, spud gun. So right now, there are some uh, plugs of potato that okay. I made just by jamming my pipe down in. Uh -huh. And there's one on the other side. Okay. I'm going to use this rod to uh -huh. compress it. So we have potato. Potato inside is just air. We're uh -huh. going to compress it. And it's going to hopefully <laughs> right. shoot my potato Create out the side. Pressure. All right. Potato okay. pressure. All yeah. right. Yeah, I should not do this one. Yeah. You <laughs> All right. Ready? Yep. All right, Stace. All right. One, two, three. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, it hit a light. Where'd it go? Oh, it's somewhere over there. That was awesome. Though. Yeah, it's gonna smell like French fries in here soon. Mm. That was okay, amazing. Well, so that one, we, we have one more big one. One more big one. Let's yes, I've been I brought one of my favorite things. Brought the Wondercraft, which oh, is a hovercraft. It works on air. Oh, right over here. Right okay, over here. Let's do it. I'm so excited for this. This looks awesome. All right, this. You built this? This was actually built by our exhibits department. Okay. okay. And it works on air. Mm -hmm. Inside of it is a leaf blower. It's going to be very loud when I turn <laughs> cool. it on. Okay. And what it does is the leaf blower comes on, it blows air out, uh -huh. and it fills up this bag that you see. That you can't see it real good right now, Underneath. but you'll see once I get yeah once I turn it on that it will fill with air. And there's uh -huh. some small holes in it, so some of the air escapes. Okay. okay. And it actually creates a little cushion of air. Air uh -huh. is really strong. That pressure can actually lift people up. So both yeah. of you can sit on it Let's at once. Let's Whoa. turn it on. Let's and get this thing going. if you've ever played air hockey at an arcade, it's kind of like that. that the way it just oh, skims yeah. along the surface because of the air. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and have a seat. Yeah, and remember, the, the Wonder Lab Museum of Science, Health, and Technology is located right downtown in Bloomington, Indiana. You can visit them anytime to have some hands-on fun with all sorts of stuff. I want to thank Stacy again. And let's ride this yeah. thing. I'm let's excited. do it. Oh, yes. Let's go. All right. Am I on first? Okay. But you can both uh, sit on it at the same time and sit down and then I'll plug right. it in. Okay. Sit, sit. Oh. All right. Hold on. Here we go. Whoa! Whoa! This is awesome! Whoa! Ever wonder what makes it rain? 
Go to the FridayZone.org to play the new Weather Zone game and learn about all different elements that affect weather. Learn about temperature Boop. and humidity Boo. and pressure bah. and how they combine to create all kinds of different weather conditions. So let's have fun and explore the wonderful world of weather at FridayZone.org. Mark is back with a fun and musical project. You'll need a cardboard tube, scissors, wax paper, and a rubber band. All you need to do is tear out a piece of wax paper. And using the rubber band, secure it to the end of your cardboard tube. Cut a small hole near the end of the tube. And voila, you've just created your very own super annoying musical instrument. Play us something, Mark. Wow, bravissimo, bravissimo. Encore, encore. Welcome back, guys. How's it going, everybody? Yeah. Good! Yeah! All right. So, in today's hands-on craft, we'll be making fun little bugs. That's right, Taylor. Our bugs are a little scared to fly, so we're going to make a fun little parachute with them, too. To kind of neat, right? Yeah. To make a parachuting bug, all you need is a couple of styrofoam balls like these. We've got some... Uh, Googly eyes, some toothpicks, paper for making the wings, and some paints. Now you'll also need some yarn and a square of fabric, which I already have here and here, to make the parachute. So let's get started. Now I have right here with me a bug already made. You can check this out. I've got a little bee. So this is what your bug is going to look like, guys. So now uh, step one would be to paint it. So think of whatever colors you want to make your bug and start coloring those in or painting those on. Such a tough so, choice. So let's see, you guys, big, medium, small? What, what do you are you want? thinking? Big, big, what kind of bug? Big, medium. Bee. We have a bee keeper what over here. Want, big, All right, Dee Dee. What kind okay. of bug are you thinking? An Go ahead and start white. painting those up. So I'll bee. get you guys your brushes. Another Where bee. the bushes go? <laughs> what about yours? Uh, Troy. I have no idea. No idea. I have no idea yet either. Um, and also, guys, if you want to go ahead and start putting them together, let me show you an easy way. If you say this is your head, you stick that in there like that. And then you take the body, you stick it in there like that, and then they stick together. So you, you just know, connect it with the toothpick? You just connect it. Yeah, you don't have to use the glue or anything, and it's a lot easier. So go ahead and take a toothpick, so Taylor, put you guys together. Our friend over here has a really good idea for go. his bug. Can you tell us yeah, what yeah. it is? A stink bug. A stink <laughs> bug? Oh, good Is it really going to smell? Um, maybe. You know what you're going to do yet? There? A spider. Oh, okay. a spider. I like now, these. These are all good so far. I'm going to... I'm going to borrow your paint. What are you making? A fever bug? <laughs> oh, that looks cool. I don't know. I kind of want to just do, like, bright colors. Let's call it the Friday Zone bug. They only live in the zone. Isaiah, what kind of bug are you making? Spider. Spider! Oh, that's cool. Hmm. What do you think of that? Do you like spiders? No. You, when, you want to know something? The other night, I was laying in bed, and I was getting ready to fall asleep, and I thought I saw something on the wall, um, and then I didn't pay any attention to it, and then I looked, and here's my pillow. No There was way. a spider this big on my wall, crawling towards my face. Did it have a parachute? <laughs> no. <laughs> so the next step, guys, is once you get that painted, and take your time painting, I'm just going to explain what's going on next. We're going to put the wings on like this. So what you're going to do is to do that, Take your scissors, we'll take these ones, be careful, pull them out a little bit, and you're gonna make, uh, you're gonna cut two little slits in the top, make it a little area, Let's see if I can show you guys. And then one right there, 
And you do that, and you would cut the holes in like I just did, and then you just stick them in, and they stay in there pretty well. And then if you wanted to stay in a little bit stronger, you could put some glue or whatever and stuff like that. Now, the, another part you're going to want to do, if you have a bee and you got a stinger, like we did earlier with the toothpick in the body, mm -hmm. you just put this toothpick right in the end. We broke this one in half. And you just stick it in the end. You get a little stinger. And also, same for the antennas. You get a stinger. Or, yeah, Isaiah, if you wanted to uh, make a bunch of spider legs, you could just get toothpicks. We could paint them black. Spider legs. Stick oh, them on the side. He's already started over um, here. If you're finishing up your painting right now and you need googly eyes, more paint, more paint, more paint. let me know. I deliver it. There you go. See, I got blue paint all over. Ooh, you need yeah. So as we continue working on our flight challenge bugs, let's watch Taylor try to take to the skies in this Friday Zone flashback. Hmm. Hey guys, I'm here with Travis Vinsel, and we are going to learn a little bit about how hot air balloons work. So Travis, do you want to get us started over here? Sure, we'll take everything out of the van and get going. Great, awesome. Taylor and Travis muscle the hot air balloon equipment out of the van and onto the ground to get ready for the flight. The basket of a hot air balloon is made out of wicker, and we were a little curious about the durability of this wicker basket. A woven basket has no seams, and anything that you put together, the weak point is the seam. Right. But since it's woven, there are no seams, okay. so it's very strong and there's no weak point. Uh, since it's wicker and woven, it is actually flexible. So you can see like this, it can move around, uh -huh. which means when we hit the ground or when the, whatever we're doing during inflation, it's not, it's flexible, it gives a little right, bit, which right. is great. So it takes a person about a month to weave one of these baskets. Wow, that's so impressive. If you're anything like us, I bet you're wondering how hot air balloons fly. This is our burner system, which is a redundant system. We only really need one burner to fly. Okay. But we have two of them here, and the fuel comes up through the, through the burners. Uh -huh. And what it does is it goes through these coils. And when it goes through the coils, we take the liquid propane and turn it into a vapor. Okay. And therefore, it has much more pressure and then that flame comes out of this and that's what heats air up. Once the burner is hooked up and secured with heavy duty carabiners, it was time for the main event, the balloon. The main portion of a hot air balloon is made up of nylon, which Travis assures us is very durable. But did you know hot air balloons did not always look and feel like this one? The last 50 years have been modern ballooning with nylon uh -huh. and, and liquid propane. Prior to that, um, for about 150 years right. while ballooning was around, uh, they just built a fire under a big bag and would cut it loose and up wow. the balloon would go. Once the balloon is spread out, the balloon needs to be filled 75% with cold air before it can be inflated with hot air. Travis's daughter Molly assisted Taylor in holding the balloon's main opening to allow airflow, and this proved to be a very tedious task. Once the balloon was at 75% inflation, we had to see for ourselves what it was like to stand inside a 90,000 cubic foot balloon. Once we stand the balloon up, the pressure inside the balloon is, is greater pressure than the outside because it's okay. hot air, okay. um, but it's less dense and that's the reason it rises. Wow, yeah, this is amazing. And then it was time for the burners. In a hot air balloon, a gas burner is used to heat air to the temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Since hot air is lighter and less dense than the cool air around the balloon, the heated air causes the whole balloon to rise. When the air inside the balloon cools down, or when the hot air is let out, that's when the balloon goes down. So whenever we take off, we're totally at the mercy of the wind. So we just, the winds drift us wherever they drift us. Yeah. Um, and uh, we can change our direction a little bit because usually at different altitudes there's different winds and then uh, we look for a nice big field or a playground or something like this to come down and land. Despite our best efforts, the wind was just too strong to inflate the balloon entirely. So unfortunately, we could not soar the open skies. Travis, however, being a balloonist for many years, has flown on hundreds of flights from coast to coast. I've flown all across the United States, pretty much coast to coast. Um, I've flown in central Mexico. Um, but you know, when it really comes down to it, southern Indiana is a great place to fly. Well, how exactly do you pack this thing back up? Well, what we'll do here is we will stretch the balloon out, squeeze the air all out of it, okay. and then we'll put it back in that bag. And if you guys will give me a hand, yeah, uh, we'll definitely. get it done in about five minutes. No problem. Sometimes you just need to use some unconventional methods to get things done. One, two, three. Our balloon-filled day had to come to an end. We packed up the balloon in the bag and then in the van. 
and last but not least, the wicker basket and burners. So Friday Zone viewers, if we have you soaring through the air with excitement, Travis has some information for you. They can visit our website, tjvballoons.com or vinsel.com. You can get there and you can see lots of pictures and videos and learn more about what hot air balloons is all like and maybe even buy a ride. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And thank all of you guys for coming out here and watching us with Travis and his hot air balloons. And we'll see you back in Studio 6. Welcome back. Our bugs are about to take flight, but before we get to demonstrating our parachutes, I kind of got to show you guys some secret bugs back here. Secret bugs? Secret. They've been working so hard. Oh, Haven't been telling us at all. Secret Dee Dee, sh you got to lift this up and show them. What is that? That is an orange crazy spider. With How many eyes? Eight. <laughs> One of them's orange. And, and it's got webbing in the back. Oh, webbing. webbing. You know, a spider, we had a tarantula on the show once and it webbed all over my hand. All over it. It's insane. It's gross. It looks great. Willow, what do you got? A bee. A bee. Your bee looks very stingery. Is stingery. it nice though? Mm, looks good. Ouch. Hey, Troy. What are you working on? Black Widow. Oh, really? I'm scared of those. Can I see it? Ooh, it's alive. Are you about to put its eyes on? Yep. Wonderful. Well, we'll let you finish up really fast. Eye. One eye. All right, you got to stand up. Just because this is probably the coolest bug we will ever have here in the Friday Zone. This Maybe. This is a stink bug that I resurrected. <laughs> so it's alive or not? Um, both. Both. Its head fell off and I glued it back together. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, well, I'm going to show you guys one more really fast. And then we're gonna test these out. Super spider. Hey Penelope, can you show us your bug? Just get the parachute on and everything. What? Do you see that? Tell everybody what it is. A ladybug. An upside down ladybug with one eye. One eye. Well, I was inspired by. Can yours. we try these? I want to try these. Yeah, I was inspired by Penelope too. Emily, show us how it's done. See this? Yeah, this yeah. is like my Mike Wazowski ladybug. I'm hoping this works right. Okay, everybody. Has everybody got their parachutes on? If you do. If you do. Grab your parachute. I would say, let's maybe try it up here. You're just going to take it and you want to go up and out, all right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so you're going to go up and out. Just throw it. So see if you can catch them one. So right. on count three one, two, three. Oh, <laughs> they're all dead. <laughs> ah. yeah. All right, well, if you guys at home create your own insect, we would love to hear about it and see how it turned out. So connect with us on our website, FridayZone.org. And from there, you can also play games, watch episodes, even see behind the scenes of our crafts today. So. And remember to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone away. We'll see you guys here next week. Oh, you got to go try it. All right, let's keep making some bugs. Oh, you just made even some Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you.